So we are officially live on social media. Today is September 29th, 2001. And this is Reflection Artist Live, episode number 47. And today we have with us special guest, Renee Douglas, better yet known as the Buffing Queen. Uh, she is, <laughs> she is uh, well known uh, amongst your peers in the industry as, you know, being a metal polish expert. However, uh, she owns, what is the name of it? It's Buffing Queen mm -hmm. Auto Detail and a Metal Polish out of mm -hmm. Mass. And she's been in the industry uh, between starting in the body shop side and evolving into the detail side with metal polishing for roughly around eight years. And she's owned her own business uh, right now for roughly around four. Uh, however, we're going to dive into getting to know Renee um, and understanding how it all started for her, you know, starting from those early years of, you know, getting involved with uh, body shop and detail. And so Renee, thank you for joining us on behalf of Buff and Shine and, uh, you know, being another one of our uh, special guests on the Reflection Artist Live. No problem. Thank you for having me on. I'm excited to talk to you about what I do <laughs> well let us know how did it all how did it all start I mean what oh it started what triggered eight, it it started eight years ago um oh okay this is actually a really funny story kind of I mean you guys are all gonna think this is interesting but um eight years ago I uh was actually working at a slaughterhouse um I know that sounds very interesting but um what were you we slaughtering uh, cows. The, I didn't slaughter them. I didn't slaughter them. I just packed it after the <laughs> butchers cut everything up and everything. So I could tell you like any sort of cut on a cow or pig if you want, but, um, <laughs> but so that place unfortunately had burnt down at the time when I was working there. So I, <laughs> yeah, so I didn't want to collect. Um, and I was like, I want to say, what was it? Eight years ago. Now I was like 21, 22 at the time. So I was young and I'm like, I can get a new job. And my landlord at the time owned an auto body shop. So he heard what happened and offered me a detailing job. And I kind of just thought it was like, I'll go, I'll vacuum a car. I'll like do windows and wipe everything down. And the first week I'm there, they're having me like rotary buff on a car. Oh, and wow. I'm like, yep. So I'm like, um, I've never used a machine like that before. Never done that before. Um, so basically I kind of had the guy who was detailing before kind of teach me some stuff, but then I also, they offered like three M classes at the time when you work in an auto body shop, I guess. So this 3M guy came and just kind of gave me a rough idea and a little lesson about it. And honestly, I'd really love to see what my stuff looks like eight years ago because it's probably scary, but um, at least I tried and I figured out what I really like love to do. Um, but I only- Jumping on a rotary. How was it jumping on a rotary your first time when you were going um, out there to do that? was quite scary to be honest because it I mean you know it, you could burn through I burnt through things when I worked there um to be honest everyone's gonna burn through something um me and Jen were actually just talking about that this morning so <laughs> but um it just happens and it works that you worked in an auto body shop because they could actually just like repaint it like right then and there um if it was something that was painted that they painted or whatever because usually in an auto body shop you're just working on the area that the car was worked on basically mm -hmm. and blending in the panel so that the paint matches as it leaves the shop um you'd get like dust snubs out so i learned a little bit of sanding and nice. yeah so it definitely helps with uh, understanding more about detailing when I decided to open my own company. Um, cause I left there, I only worked there for, I want to say two, two, three years. And then I had my daughter. So I stayed home for a good year before I opened my own business. Um, and then, um, I definitely learned that auto body was different than just regular detailing. Um, you do a lot more when it comes to it. I think there's a lot more to it. You're doing the whole entire car and not 
like I said, what is being repaired on in an auto Designated body shop. areas, yeah. Yes. So in the bigger sense, I didn't understand like how much you did in into one car. And, but I did it. And uh, when I started my first year, I loved it and just worked on family cars and all that stuff. Um, you started nothing- mobile? Um, kind of, I mean, I worked out of an F1, I've worked out an F-150 for like three years now, (laughs) which is not fun and not easy because you got to take everything out, put it all in. It's a good, uh, like half an hour more of your time, 45 minutes just to get all ready and everything. Um, so I am mostly mobile, but, um, I do work in my home garage as well on like the regular vehicles and stuff. And when I work on big rigs, I go to their location, which makes it a lot easier for them. Now, as far as the years that you spent in the body shop, I'm sure you picked up on a lot of your craft and like you had mentioned about with rotary mm-hmm. polishing. Mm-hmm. When did you feel that you started to catch on to that? Was it a couple of months before you started to feel a lot more confident and being able to bring it into a level of knowing that you're able to accomplish what is being asked of you with that? I would say it was definitely uh, quite a couple months after. Um, I There was a guy at the auto body shop that would help me, but he um, did not like doing the detailing at all. And I loved doing it. So he kind of pushed it all on me, which was fine. I did a lot of work there and I learned a lot of stuff. I learned all the basic 3M stuff. If that makes the old, sense. The old 3M finesse system. Oh yeah, all that yeah. old stuff, old school, everything. I feel I don't. Yeah, even and know it wasn't it's... bad stuff for its time. No, I mean no. I still have some like chucked away just in case like I ever needed it. I oh, I never throw anything out. Like I'm horrible like that. But I'm the same you way. never know. And it a little it was bit like of compound or something. Me. It's what brought me like into this industry. So it's kind of like, I don't want to get rid of it. I want a little bit of it. And I still use 3M products too. I still use my rotary. I still use their foam pads. I still use all their stuff. It's, it just depends on the vehicle, I guess. <laughs> no, that makes sense. That makes sense. So when you, when you got onto the detail side of it, I mean, obviously mm-hmm. just doing the cars and stuff. At what point, I mean, with with that and gaining momentum, where did you find yourself really finding the love for metal polish? Metal, um, I started working at fleet companies where I would work on like their dump trucks or like 250s, 350s, 450s, um, some pumper trucks and stuff. And I was just doing paint and I had a customer ask me one time, like, have you ever thought about like trying the metal? Like he was, uh, so this guy was restoring a truck at the time and he wanted what you call um, the sill of a truck, which is the uh, inside of a big rig, like where you, the door would be. Mm -hmm. Um, They call that bottom part a sill and you can polish that, but you can only polish it when the door is off. So I was like, you know, I'll get the stuff or whatever. And he had the stuff already. So I just like kind of tried it and man, let me tell you, I do it way differently than I even attempted that time. Like (laughs) way different, but I liked it. And then I started YouTubing things. And then on Instagram was a really, really big thing when it came to metal polishing. And like, I had posted a picture or something about me metal polishing and how I wanted to try it. And I had quite a few metal polishers in the industry reach out to me and say like, you should go do trainings. Like you should definitely do this. Like you can make good money doing it. And um, a lot of people kind of pushed me and like supported me to like do this niche. Not a lot of people do it either. So they want more people to do it in the industry. Yeah. We're more supportive about people coming into the industry, I think, like polishing industry, than I feel detailing. I feel like we are supportive in detailing, but there's a lot of negativity. And then polishing, um, I don't ever get negativity. All I get is positivity, no matter who, what company, who it is, where you are. It, everyone's very nice to each other, I think. <laughs> very good. Very good. Yeah. With, with your few I mean how many years were you into your own business before you made the transition of 
saying, you know what, I really want to take on metal polishing as a as a as an income, as an actual more of a uh, exclusive service that I can offer. Yep. Um, so I would say it was a year into owning or starting the Buffing Queen. Um, I started the business and I actually focused more on ceramics. And um, I, at, like before that, when I was an auto body, I never used like a DA buffer. I've always just used rotary or, or a three inch little thing or whatever, but I never had those. So I kind of learned that stuff first so that I could establish in the paint. And I knew I could do paint since I had done it previously. Mm -hmm. um, but then like a year in, I just focused straight on into metal. I flew out to California um, and I did like a metal polish training with uh, Zephyr Polishes. And they were ones that contacted me online. Like, you should try this. Like, you should go to this training. We'll teach you. And um, I was the only girl there um, out of like 15 guys. Actually, um, Kyle was there that does the air, did the air force with you guys. Kyle Clark. Yes, yes. he was there. I got to meet him there. Very nice guy. Nice. Um, but I went out there and as soon as I came back and I learned those little tit tidbits that I needed to know um, to further my career in the metal. And as soon as I did that training, and as soon as I started practicing what they taught me, I have literally not stopped since like I've each year I increase my prices because I get a little bit better at what I am doing. And it is a very high demand out here, believe it or not. It's like really very high demand. I know very few metal polishers out on the East coast, especially like as far as I am. Um, so it's a lot of, a lot of people want it done. Now, like detailing, you know, where in some cases uh, a consumer customer will hire a detailer based on whatever they read, who knows what it is that they read, you know, the, the, the false marketing to say of what they can do. And then the results are not nowhere near that. Is that the mm -hmm. same that you find in metal polishing where guys will take an attempt or other detailers in general will take an attempt and then they just do a crap job and the customer has to call you and say, hey, yep. I don't know what this guy did, but can you fix it? Yeah, I've, I've definitely had to fix a lot. Um, you can mess up a lot when it comes to sanding um, on metal. Um, it's very particular on like what, how you sand and everything and what size, what grit you use and all that stuff. So once you start sanding, that's, that's I, when I tell people to start metal polishing, I tell them do not start sanding right away. Like you want to learn the process of um, the wheels and all that stuff that you would use on the machines. Um, you can mess it up really bad by making snake lines, they call them. Um, and that's just because you're not holding the buffer or using the buffer properly. And uh, basically they, like Zephyr always says, you got to trust the process. If you don't trust the process, you have to start all over again. And it's a big mess sometimes. So I have had to fix it, quite a lot of people's mistakes and everything, but it honestly is not um, easy to get it so perfect. I think it's your metal's never going to be perfect, no matter what it looks it but you, it's never going to be perfect. And that is a true mirror finish that you're trying to achieve. So anything yeah. and everything will show yep. behind that. You think black oh, yeah. paint's bad, but <laughs> metal polishing. And explain, yes. tell me, you know, what you, in the difference of metal polish and detail and what you're, like we were talking about earlier, mm -hmm. what, how you view that to be so different and what the true differences are. Okay, so um, paint. Um, so when I, somebody approaches me about doing work on paint, I have different like stages of things that I do. Um, I'm either enhancing paint, I'm correcting it, not fully correcting it. I'm fully correcting it. I'm ceramicking it, I'm sealing it. I'm doing all these different things um, where it doesn't have to always, I don't, sorry, I'm like trying to think of how to explain this a little better, but uh, basically paint can be done in different ways and all sorts of ways. Metal, I feel it can only be done in two ways. You can either sand it or you cannot sand it. Um, 
it's either not going to be shiny or it's going to be shiny. Like there is no in between. There's no blending things. There's no half-assing anything in metal. It's, it's one way or the other, basically. And then I feel like paint, there's a lot of variety of like what you can do with paint. No, that, that makes, makes sense. sense. Yeah. Yeah. No, that makes sense because there's definitely different levels of defect removal, gloss, all yep. those variables that are mm -hmm. different compared to metal. And I speak from experience yeah. along with you. <laughs> so like metal, like if I sand metal, they're looking for a mirror finish. They're looking for scratches taken out. They're looking for everything. And then that's on the whole entire piece. It's not like you don't do one side, you do the other. You got to do it all. Um, and then if you don't sand, it's just going to show those little imperfections, but it's still going to be shiny. It's still going to be like almost a mirror if it's a nice tank and everything or a wheel or whatever. It's just all to, I tell the customer, I say, do you want a mirror finish or do you want it to be like really shiny? And then they let me know. And if they like the price, they like the price. If they don't like the price, then we do it the other way. So there's not much option in metal, I feel. No, that's understandable. Now, mm -hmm. as far as your personal preference of uh, brands, obviously Zephyr mm -hmm. has become one of your main ones. Yes, I love Zephyr. They're great people. Uh, their products were great. Um, I have used other stuff too. Uh, it's not like I've not used other stuff. Same with paint. I use, oh, yeah. oh, I, I know I, I use so many different products throughout one car. It's just never the same, but most of the time with metal, I do use Zephyr. Um, they just, I went out to their training. They're good people to me. We're all friends. So it's kind of just, it's just worked for me. Um, but when people ask me like what I use, I always say I use Zephyr, but do not be afraid to use anything else. I am not going to not talk to you because you use whatever other products there's so many other products out there to try so and I know metal polishers that use Zephyr and then they'll use like Renegade or they'll use um, any other brand that's out there with it it just all depends on what it works for that polisher that guy no I agree 100 percent. there's a lot of similarities there in regards mm -hmm. to the detail I just cross-referencing those materials in the application process but i asked yeah. because i know that's something that you did for training but to your point yeah there's you've always got to challenge the process and to make sure that you're relevant in regards to what you're using too to make mm -hmm. the process more proficient to say yeah so you get the job done correctly but also within a timely manner so the yes, whole margin exactly. of it is is on point for being in business mm -hmm. now yep. with with everything you have with with being a detailer and offering the metal polish and how much of your work now with four years of being in, in, in business and majority of that being where you've really dived into metal polish and how much of your business is metal polishing compared to traditional detail or coatings or correction? Um, I would definitely say it is super increased in the past two years. Um, my first year, obviously I was just learning it. Um, Last year, I was definitely getting more companies that were calling me and stuff to do both metal and paint, which I cannot tell you this. The one thing I love that I do metal and paint is I, I'm, can I tell a weird story like yeah. to explain this at all? Okay. Yeah, 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 so yeah, when yeah, I, this kind of also how I started metal polishing too. Um, I have this company, I go to him almost like three, four times a year, just wash his trucks. But in the beginning, I coated and sealed some of his trucks. So I had to go to this metal polisher shop to work on this truck. And I just thought like, what a pain in the ass, sorry. What a pain it is that this guy, this trucker has to drive to this guy's shop call me to go to this shop and work on this car. Like, it just seemed like it was a lot of work for that person to get both of us to go and like do the work and get the truck done. So it kind of uh, like made me think like, well, if I do paint and I do metal at the same time, I'm like a one-stop shop. I go to them, I get it done. I get it all done. It's not like he has to call somebody the next week to get metal done. And if they do metal, 
after I, after I do the paint, who knows what they're going to do with the paint. I mean, it gets dirty. I always do metal first before I do paint. Yeah, that is dirt. Cause it's, there's, there's just, no matter how much you work clean, it's, it's no. almost uncontrollable with how much sling and just the excess. You it get. is. I, the, the mask, I have a moon suit and everything. And I still get dirt everywhere. Like my hair is blonde. It's usually black. Like you would not recognize me like, but there's no going around it. But no. if you love what you do, then you really don't care about that. Like I could care less. I don't mind getting dirty. I'm like a little country girl. So I don't like mind getting dirty. <laughs> that makes sense. Now the, the yeah. biggest part of that is the safety and let's just yes. not to get off subject, but just to touch on that, yes. the respirators and how important it is not to get that aluminum in your lungs or any metal mm -hmm. in your lungs. How important is that in your research and training? So important. Like I can't, I know people that have gotten uh, aluminum poisoning and it's like, can kill you. Like that's how bad, like it, it I don't want to say don't do it because of that. It's not, you're not going to get that like right away that goes over time of doing this. But um, if you don't wear a mask or anything, then you can't get that aluminum poison. You have to go to the hospital and it's super, super dangerous for you. Same with in speaking of safety, like when it comes to metal, I'm not using a buffer that's only going under a thousand RPMs or whatever. Like I'm using something that's at like 3,500 RPMs continuously moving and everything. So flanges are super important. Um, gloves are super important. Wearing not shorts, not flip-flops, not a sweatshirt is super important. So um, metal is like, you need to be very safe with metal. It's very scary. Um, I have friends that have hurt themselves very bad. I have actually a crack in my like mask because a wheel is like kicked back and hit my mask before. So wow. it, anything can happen because it'll catch. Um, I'm sure you know what I mean. I don't have you, you've done the wheels before, haven't you? Yeah. They'll skip and they'll catch things and they'll the, like and, catch yeah. and um I've had like buffers fly across the shop before because I've like hit it on a corner or whatever like it, it just can happen so you have to be very very careful yeah so long hair long beards yep keep it all tucked in <laughs> the best you can wrap it up tie it <laughs> yeah I mean this is a rare moment to see my hair down to be honest it's always always up in a bun uh very very important because oh, yeah. and I know guys don't have to worry about that, but if you got long hair or the beard, like you said, it, it can happen. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And it's not, doesn't seem like it yet. Mm -hmm. Not fun. Not fun. I know. I know a guy who's like finger, like he got his, broke his whole arm because he got like, um, the buffer caught in like a wheel or something like that. So it caught around his arm and yeah, it's just not, it's very dangerous. <laughs> now with, um, with all the services you offer, I mean, of course, you're doing like standard detail and Commodore detail, oh, yeah. such as interiors and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Um, now, your market for where you're at, um, what would you say your common detail is for your kind of market? Are you getting more luxury vehicles, daily drivers? Um, what, what is your common denominator of a, of a client in regards Definitely, to that? Definitely uh, daily drivers and work vehicles. Um, and I do mostly metal, like literally all the big companies are mostly metal. Um, and I'll either do mostly polishes, I would say with the big trucks and everything, they're work trucks. So it's not, yeah. I don't like having somebody put a coating on their truck and then it's really not gonna last as long as it possibly should. I don't think that's right to do to customers. Um, so I give them the option. I explain to them everything that they need to know about coatings, about sealants, as much as I uh, kind of annoy them with the information, just because I don't want to get screwed or them to feel like I screwed them. So yeah, you're managing I do each a, other's expectations overall. Yeah. So I do mostly like a lot of polishes, especially on like the daily drivers and the no, and I do interiors and on top of that and everything. I just, that's just normally what I do. Um, I don't have a lot of luxury 
vehicles around here. I do live in a little bit of a high end town, but I don't, I mean, I'm working on a Corvette right now, which is rare because I have, I've never worked on a Corvette before. Um, so this is a first, but, uh, it's nice to switch it up. Um, yeah. it was very rare for me to work on something like that. Nice. It's just uh, different contours, but it's all still paint and wheels. Oh, paint. I know. <laughs> paint is paint. Um, it's like all fiberglass. So like all yep. big rig hoods are fiberglass. So I know fiberglass is fiberglass. Like it, it just all depends on the vehicle. You got to just feel it out and just go for it. <laughs> and with, with everything that you have going on, how far do you usually book out on average? Oh, um, so what I do is like right now I'm about two months booked out um I'm booking nice. into like late no I would say late November early December um which is very good for me because that's my winter time I'm usually really slow at that time and um since I've added metal and big rigs mostly to my schedule in the winter time uh big rigs some companies don't work in the in the winter they only do um like maintenance in the winter they'll do i only have one or two trucks out instead of four or five out at a time um so they slow down and then usually that's when i go and i start working on these trucks like if i have a couple companies that have me ceramic coat all their trucks and their excavators i'm actually doing an excavator this weekend i think Very cool. um so I'll do that stuff more in the winter, but then come February, I call all of my regulars. I call everybody that had come to me last the year before and the year before that. And I make sure they get in my schedule because as soon as March comes, I am booked till almost August usually. Wow. That's yeah, when it starts to so, warm up and everybody wants yep. to get out and use their and They toys. all call me, oh, spring's coming. And then, but I, I like, to make sure like my regular customers that give me consistent work all year um get that spot before i get the random oh i heard about you and da 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 like somebody i don't know so i like to give them the option to pick their spots before anyone else so this fills the downtime in the winter season for you then by being able to do that and then with that and even though you're mobile i mean you said you have your your home garage and you get to go mm -hmm. to their location i mean most of these places like ex, uh, excavator and stuff like that and these yeah. rigs i'm sure that they have their own place where they facilitate keeping them inside so yep. i'm sure that makes it super convenient for you it does and when i go off location i make them like i don't make them but i tell them i cannot go unless i got air water and electricity other than that i can supply everything else and as long as in an indoor space usually especially for excavators and coatings and stuff as long as they can do that i can go to them no problem what if so. they said they didn't have any air and they just had electric and water you still just gonna um go? <laughs> so i now that i have my big box truck i do plan on getting a little like compressor and stuff like that but i mean it's not my fault that they don't have it if they don't have it i'm not going no big deal on to the next this can't let that slow you down no 100 percent agree that's mm -hmm. awesome especially yeah. being able you know a lot of times in 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 most cases with detailers in the winter time mm -hmm. they usually have to save they usually have to save mm -hmm. or they plow snow or they find some other oddball you know task outside of detailing that makes them some money and revenue to kind of hold them over during that winter season until they can get right back up and ramped up into detailing again yep um, I am pretty fortunate that I am busy during the winter. Um, I, I've honestly never had an issue in the winter, maybe a week. I'll have like a rough week or something, but like, besides that, I have not had an issue, which I'm very thankful and I'm very blessed for because it just, uh, I don't know. I'm just happy about that, but, um, I, yeah. I do plan on doing um a training this winter so i hope to have a couple people come out and do some metal polish training with me i did very one good. a couple i did one like two years ago with some local people and it went really well so i'm hoping to add that to my um i guess my career is to train people in doing this get that resume going and then you become the, the go-to person over time yeah yeah 
I hope so. And um, I'm like, I, I use Zephyr and they're very supportive about me, you know, training people and stuff like that. So I'm um, like appreciated of that because they trained me how to do metal polishing, really. I give them a lot of credit for like teaching me all those little tidbits and stuff like that. So when I have somebody who wants to train, I take what I did and I want them to learn the way I did. And hopefully it's easier for them when they go to try it because it's not easy to do it's not like i don't, know, I don't want to say detailing is easy it's not, not easy but it, it metal pulsing is not easy <laughs> no no and it's cool that they recognize you for that ability and hopefully mm -hmm. maybe later down the road you that may be an opportunity to be part of the zephyr team in some way shape or form <laughs> you never know right we'll see we'll <laughs> see i love i love them either way and no pressure yeah. nothing out of that <laughs> I'm uh, so busy. I am so busy in life. Like I, I am enjoying what I do by myself and I'm enjoying that part of it all. So anything more is a little, uh, I'm nervous to take on being so busy. <laughs> Plus you got to keep balance, right? You know, you have your home life yeah. with your daughter and everything, and then you yep. got business life and you know, you don't want to sacrifice one more than the other. You want to keep that balance yes. there. And it sounds exactly. like you're doing a pretty good job of that. I try, you know, I think everyone knows how that is. You try oh, yeah. your best. So yeah. it's not easy. It's not easy with kids and it's not easy being a mom with the kid and a business. It's all, I mean, out, you're up late, you're up early, you're, you're never stopping. So lack of sleep all the time, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, now with, with, everything you've done and the reputation you've built, is there any really cool opportunities that have come along with metal polishing that have presented themselves like major accounts or anything where you've been able to work on uh, any kind of special uh, rig or vehicle just due to that kind of service that you're offering? Um, it's funny. Cause like every time I book a job, I'm like, wow, this is so cool. I can't believe I'm working on this truck. Like I am a truck geek. Like I love big rigs. I love trucks. So, I mean, I, I think every project is a really good project. Um, I did work on a really nice Peterbilt a couple of months ago and it was like a sleeper and it just overall, like the whole entire project was ceramic and metal and it at the end, it just looked phenomenal. And I was so proud of myself. I'm always proud of myself for what I do. I'm so weird, but uh, you got to be if you love what you do, because yeah. uh, if you don't love what you do, then you are going to be miserable. I went to four years of college to in graphic design when I uh, grad, like after high school. And I hated it I hated it so much I did it but I hated it and I'm not even doing that anymore so it just all depends on what you really truly love to do you Can gotta I take do you it document a lot of your work as you go especially with projects like that I do um I do a lot of TikTok now actually because uh I I have been slacking on the um taking pictures and stuff like that I think it's just because I am so busy I just want to get the project done um but when I do take pictures I always find myself taking pictures of my metal projects versus like my paint projects and stuff like that um probably because I'm so proud of it or I literally turn it into like it was gray into a mirror. I mean, that I just think that's awesome. <laughs> and it is, and it makes for good content. Now, so you're finding that, you know, for you, TikTok is more useful versus yeah. like an Instagram or a Facebook? Um, so I love Instagram. I'm always going to be down for Instagram. That's kind of my main uh, media, social media that I use. Um, but I love TikTok because I can make like, five second videos on Snapchat or whatever, and then put them all together, add a song onto it, boom, done, onto the next. Like you're just done. You don't have to worry about social media past that point. And then you're on to your next project. And I just do it like late at night and put it all together. And you get a glimpse of like what I'm doing. Sometimes you see me uh, working on the project. Sometimes you just see the projects before and after and I mean, it's, 
I've, I've slacked a lot on the social media this year um, with just. Well, I mean, you being able to already dive into TikTok. I mean, there's a yeah. lot of us in this industry that are still, you know, I'm guilty of it myself, still being, you know, Facebook, Instagram, and keeping it simple. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. TikTok, I mean, to me, I just, I, I pick up my phone and it's like channel surfing. Yeah, because there's I'm so on much it. really I'm interesting on it stuff. All the time. I just have everybody's on it. Yeah, and I haven't done anything, so it's like I'm still. And I was just actually talking with our team at Buff and Shine about, you know, taking that avenue and that advantage now of TikTok because there's a lot of people that are using it and mm -hmm. it's a great platform. But we just have to wrap our heads around how to properly use it because we're so used to, to the tr traditional Instagram and Facebook platforms. Yeah. I, um, I love it because it's weird. Um, I have like a different friends on TikTok, like people that I watch and everything. Like I don't have, the, I don't, I've never seen them on Instagram or I've missed them and stuff. And you'll see people that like TikTok, there's, they blew up for some people for TikTok. And then some people I just use it like me. I just make videos for Instagram and for Facebook and I still use those basic things, but TikTok is definitely like big now. And, um, it's more of a visual thing, like, uh, more of, um, like you're there. I don't know. It's all videos yeah. and stuff like that. And it's, so it's like more of a personal thing. And it's short, short videos. So it, get, it mm -hmm. gets their attention span right at that sweet spot of just being enough to intrigue them. And then it's over with. And they're like, oh, yep. I want more. I need yeah. another video. <laughs> yeah. So that's the thing is like you do these short videos. You can do them like 15 seconds or 60 seconds or 30 seconds or something and or less. But um, they just came out with like three minute videos on TikTok. And I actually scroll by them because they're too long. Like I just cannot focus on that. Like I like how short it is and like it gets you, like you said, intrigued because sometimes you'll like want to look at more of their work. So then you'll go to their page and you look at more of their work and stuff. I've done that with a lot of detailers and a lot of polishers on TikTok that I have not, like I said, I, did, I don't really scroll through Instagram too much, um, but I just, I never noticed them until I found, saw them on TikTok because their videos, uh, got my attention i'm like damn i wish i could do a video like that yeah. like how did you do that yeah like what the heck are you doing like yeah. where do you get all these edit features from exactly <laughs> i mean i know how to put them together and add music but those like other things that are like people are talking in the background and this and that and i'm like i, I wish i could do that because they're like telling you your story they're telling you what they're doing and i'm yeah. like oh this is pretty cool but got to learn it more about it, I guess. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's definitely a whole different world with it, with that stuff. And I'm, I, I want to be there myself with learning that stuff. Cause I feel like, like you said, strongly, it is a good platform and it's, it's quick. It's easy. And it really those... is. I remember, uh, like when I first started Instagram, I would download like, all, like five different apps just to create like a video to work on oh, Instagram. Crap. Well, like I just wanted something different and I, uh, I didn't have like a GoPro or anything at that yeah. point. So I was just like taking videos on my phone and then putting it on one app and then doing it to add more, you know, it was a project, but TikTok makes life so much easier. It really is. You have to try it, Justin. Like it is so much easier than you think to put the videos together. It pretty much does it for you basically. Well, as soon as I get past the whole like Russian spy or Chinese spy aspect of how they made TikTok, <laughs> no, I, I, I am, I plan on engaging in it and learning a bit more. It's something that's on my list to do because I, I'm active with social media in general. And when I got mm -hmm. active with social media, I transitioned in, it, when I got my business in 08, I transitioned from the MySpace era to the Facebook. I was going to say, I don't and, even know if Facebook was around then. <laughs> and I mean, this is back when I had like T-Mobile with my Fave 5 and they were yep. the first phone company to actually <laughs> offer MySpace on your phone for social media on a phone. And that was like the <laughs> coolest thing ever. So that's oh how far God. back I go with it. But when I transitioned into it, I transitioned into making myself a profile like everybody else did. And they didn't have business profiles and all that other stuff. It was just like MySpace. You make a profile about yourself and then you add pictures and you know, add friends yep. and whatsoever. But 
I started that way and uploading my photos from there. And I started documenting all my photos with different galleries mm -hmm. and different events. And then what that did was it led me into doing live videos at all the different events I started going to. And yep. that's what really worked for me was the live videos. And now they still work. I feel that they've gotten more personal with a lot mm -hmm. of people in, as a whole in the industry because people mm -hmm. are now going live and not just talking business or detailing, but like they're putting everything on their whole page about themselves, their life and everything else that's going on. Some mm -hmm. necessary, some unnecessary, but yep. overall the, the live thing is, is kind of, uh, I don't want to say it's coming to an end, but it's not as useful as what we're speaking on with the short videos on TikTok mm -hmm. where it captures the audience a lot quicker. It's the attention span, I think, that people have these days. And like, I think it's because social media is so big right now and it's going to just get bigger and bigger that they want like instant results, instant this, instant that. So doing the shorter videos, they're like more satisfying to them than sitting there and watching, you know, something that's like three minutes long, four minutes yeah. long, like you're gonna I mean I still think that that works too I Has still to be really rich content though and it keeps yes. them intrigued the whole time yes exactly um but yeah I definitely I I have people that ask me I don't know if they ever ask you but I have people that ask me like how did you build your social media because I mean I got uh, followers on Instagram and everything all people that ask me like how did I do that and I'm like I just posted I just posted things like Stay keep active. posting your work yep. keep doing it because more people are going to see it like the more you post the more they're going to see um which is probably why I'm I've been slacking on that so bad and not it but I I'm okay with that I'm just I'm fine with that but anybody who's starting out or anything or anybody who wants to like build in their uh, in just like wherever they're located and stuff, advertise, 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 show your work the best you can take pictures, videos, everything. That's one thing I can ad give advice for that. No, that's, that's perfect because that is the one thing that see people, I think do that. And then they look for instant gratification with followers, mm -hmm. likes, mm -hmm. and all these other things. Mm -hmm. And if that's your focus, you're going to be disappointed because it takes a while. You have to have patience. Mm -hmm. And if you have the patience or you just look at it as I'm just posting and putting it out, posting and putting it out just so I have yep. content. And then in time, that's where the following and you, you know, you blow mm -hmm. up more because you were doing it in the efforts of just putting content out. You weren't looking yep. for the end result mm -hmm. in time. The, the byproduct of that is the end result of getting popularity or notor you know notoriety mm -hmm. or whatever the case may be for the social media platform you're using. But yeah, the consistency is where it's at. Yeah. And for people that ask that question too, I hope that they know that um, those people, those followers, those people that like that stuff, uh, like 80% of them are not your customers or more than 80% of them, I would say, and they're not paying your bills. So don't waste your time. If it's, if it's more stressful for you to want a higher social media account, um, then I, I don't know. I just find that it's like a waste of your time sometimes. And it's like, you want to focus more on like, I don't know, advertising around your neighborhood and stuff like that, or advertising on fo Facebook, like you can do, like I have the town of, I'm in the town of Groton and Facebook, I think has town pages, at least they do where I'm from. And yeah. um, you can just like, people will go, I'm looking for a detailer and then they can put your name right underneath it. Like that, I think is the best way to do um, social media and uh, not to, uh, brag about your work and like get likes and follows like I don't find that gratifying I guess you would no. say post to be as uh, uh, with intentions of it being marketing in some way shape or form yes if you I always love keep what that I mindset, do you'll yep. love it yeah I love what I do that's why I post and that's why I like sharing uh, mostly on Instagram I don't do it to like get followers they're not paying my bills I don't care what I post is like less than half of what I'm actually really working on so yeah yeah <laughs> don't have time to post every single vehicle and it's no. funny because there are some people that post every single vehicle yes and, and I'm like, like you are wasting your time like they can see from 
that Chevy to that Honda that you did the same thing. Just post one of them. You don't have to post it consistently. Like sometimes I won't post for like a week or two or whatever, because I can't. And um, it, yeah, I just can't. Yeah. Or building your content, <laughs> right? Like I, I get videos of vehicles uh, as we finish them and mm -hmm. I will be backlogged on a week or two worth of videos or sometimes quite a few yep. more than that but it's always content I will have that it's it's in the chamber ready to be put out there mm -hmm. in the social media. That yeah. way I always have some content no matter what the week looks like. So it may have been something mm -hmm. we did a month ago or two weeks ago, yep. but it's now something because no matter what, it's always relevant for me. So it gives yeah. me a way to sit on it and marinate the thought of how I'm going to come across with my content and how I explain exactly. it and all that. So it's like wordsmithing yes. in a way. Yeah, you couldn't put it any perfectly. I feel like I, what I post, I probably did like two, three weeks ago. Like I never post like that week. One, I get nervous doing that because then the people know what you're working on at that moment in time. And if they know where you are, they're going to either want to come see you or, you know, if I'm working on something super cool, like some people are, might want to come see it. And I'm like, I don't want to be bothered. I don't no. want to deal with no. that. Um, and then you're also right where um, you you want to post what is you want people to see that you do the most, you know, you do the best at. Yes, you do paint. Yes, I do metal. Yes, I worked on this. Yes, I worked on that. But you also have to focus on what is going to help you get what you're want to work on. I don't yeah, know. Building, I just, your, building your business, basically. Yes. You know what, like, you don't want to post, I worked on a Honda Accord and then did a big rig. Like, you just want to post the big rig if you want to do big rigs. If you want to work on Hondas, post just the regular cars and stuff like that. Don't post everything. Don't overload people where they don't want to look at your stuff. Yeah, absolutely. And that helps in preaching to the, to the market of what you're trying to obtain with the services you yeah. offer. Yep. Now, so where with your niche is, where... Like another thing that people ask me, like, why are you working on big rigs? Well, I live near three highways and I live near industrial parks all over the place. Of course, I'm going to work on big rigs because that's what's around me. Do yeah. what's around you. Like, um, you know, Jen, obviously Jen uh -huh. works on luxury cars, but that's what's out there. That's what she focuses on. And all that stuff. You got to work. You got to go where your environment is going to lead you to the most money, I guess. Like people Some who people do marine, maybe they're yes. next to a marina or like down in yep. South Florida where there's huge marinas mm -hmm. and there's just tons of work to, to be had. Yep. And knowing yep. your market to get that work is really where it's at. That's what you're mm -hmm. achieving. Yes. Absolutely. Now, exactly. talking about growth and things like that, yep. you had mentioned to me that you have potentially uh, an going into a building explain that a little bit well I mean I don't I don't really want to say too much but I am looking for a shop I'm actively looking for a shop um I'd really like to get into a shop I'm hoping sooner than later uh we'll see um but I did recently purchase a box truck that is a definite thing uh well I didn't recently purchase it I've had it for a year um, and then I've had to fix some stuff on it, build the inside of it and get it all ready. And it's like a roll up door. I can stand inside of it. I don't know how I love all you detailers, but I don't know how anybody can work out of a van where you cannot stand in it like that yeah. hunched over. Oh my God, that would drive <laughs> me insane. Like I was lucky to have gotten my box truck and I have like an aisle and like one side's metal, one side's paint stuff. And I have my toolbox and it's the next step of the buffing clean, I guess you would say. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's still a big move. I mean, with the, with some of the vans, trucks and, and little transit mm -hmm. vans, people work at it. When you have a box truck, that is a game changer because there's so much that you could put in there that doesn't limit you other than weather. But, you know, if you're set up yeah. to where you're, able to be where the client can facilitate for you mm -hmm. then it's a win-win you got everything at it your is. fingertips it is working out of an f-150 for three years i don't know how i did it like i would honestly every single time without a doubt forget something that i needed uh show up and realize i need to do more so i don't have what i need for oh. that job 
you know it's like you can only bring so much stuff in an f-150 you can't yeah. just take all of the metal stuff and all of the paint stuff and then your vacuum and the, this and da, 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 like everything you can't do that and uh, without a doubt, it's always something either small or big or something I just wish I had to do the project more. It, it, without a fail, it was something. But now, now you, I always have everything with me. It's great. You don't have to play Tetris anymore trying to nope. get things to fit the certain way. <laughs> yeah, that's another thing. That was another thing. Like vacuum had to go in one spot. This had to go in another spot, no matter what, or it wouldn't fit. It was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you open the door, it all just comes tumbling out. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> As you're talking to the customer. <laughs> yep. There was plenty of times when I picked my daughter up at like daycare and like the back seat would have stuff in it and something would fall out. And she'd be like, mom, like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, plenty of times, but now she loves riding in the box truck because she's like my little mini me. Like she wants to be a buffing queen. Uh, she's not a princess, everyone. She's the queen. <laughs> and how old is she? She's six. Six. Wow. <laughs> yes. Yeah. She's still young, but <laughs> I get it. She's, she wants to try. She has her own like spray bottles in my truck and everything. And she won't let me touch them though. God forbid. <laughs> you know what that's like I'm I sure. do you I've got kids. a four-year-old she just turned four and she's yeah, yeah she's she's got quite the attitude and she's quite the diva yeah oh yeah in They're her own world <laughs> oh yes <laughs> well cool um we are coming up on on time for everything so cool. I, I it was definitely uh awesome to to hear your story and everything mm -hmm. that has brought you on the path to where you are now which is really yep. cool um, it was how, good to talk to you, Justin. It's been since Kentucky, so I know. good old Kentucky. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. <laughs> that was a good show. It was a good it show. It was a wicked good show. I loved it. I loved seeing everybody, and though I thrive when I go to those things, it's like you get such an energy, like talking to people that actually do and like what you do too, because. Yes. You yeah. know how many times I, I'm trying to talk to anybody about detailing around me and they're like, all right, Renee, like we get yeah. it. Love detailing. You do this, you do that. We get it. And I'm like, I know I just, eh. so when I go to those things, I like, I'm like a bouncing all over the place, talking to everyone. I love it. It's, and it I was thrive. a good show for it being within the detail community even though it wasn't yeah. very uh consumer strong but I, the mm -hmm. next one should be with the with the what was happening this time but yeah it was good for everybody you're right it was definitely yeah because um it wasn't like you know mte where it's like those are like dent people like they do dent uh what is is that what it is um Painless dent repair i mean yeah so like half the show, good. I felt like I didn't know everybody at that show, but at like um, in Kentucky, it was like everybody did the same thing, not the Four same details. thing, but like on the same level with it all and just understood each other <laughs> perfectly. Yeah. Very cool. Now, how would people go about uh, getting a hold of you if they maybe want to know more about metal polishing or just in general, if we get viewers that want to get a hold of you for anything talking business? So you, if for that, I would just like Instagram or Facebook, I guess. Um, I don't like to give out my number and deal That's with that fine. all. You don't have to. Um, but just Facebook, Renee Douglas, or you can find me on Facebook under the Buffing Queen Auto Detailing, I think it is. And then on Instagram, it's at the Buffing Queen. Um, that's it on Instagram. Okay. So, but you can find me on those. And if, if anybody is interested, I will give them my email or something like that at that point, but I'm usually picky with that. Oh, the girl's busy. So if you guys need yes. to get a hold of her, just message her. <laughs> yes. Um, do you have any last words? I always ask is any last words of advice for any listeners, detailers, anybody getting into the business, and especially since you specialize in metal polishing now, anything that could be helpful? Um... I am literally just, um, I just want everyone to love what they do, like, um, and do it. Like I, even if it's not detailing and stuff, if you come into the detailing industry and you're like, I don't like it, go do what you love to do. Cause it's going to make life a lot easier and you're going to wake up, not really caring what you're doing for work. You're just going to go and you're going to love what you do. 
Um, but yeah, I just, I believe in that a lot because I really do love doing my metal polishing and I do love doing the detailing. So I think it's a waste of life if you're doing something that's making you unhappy and you don't like what you're doing. This is very so, true. Yeah. I 100% yeah. agree. That is good. That is really good. Well, awesome. Well, Renee, thank you. And of course, thank on behalf you. of Buff and Shine, we thank you very much for taking your time out of the day to spend on the podcast and you're number 47 so we will be uploading this <laughs> to all the podcast platforms and youtube and then of course this is on our reflection artist page so it's live now but it'll be up there mm -hmm. for you to grab at any point in time that you'd like to share and of course, awesome. any of them, yeah and that's always nice right once it goes out there it's it's out there forever so you'll be able to look uh, back okay. on this five years from now and be like wow so but that's okay. I don't mind. If it helps somebody in the process, then I'm happy. So yep, I agree hundred percent. And that's where we could also maybe even revisit doing another one at a later date, which would be really neat. Oh, so. of course. I love doing these things. Like I Very said, cool. I love talking to the people about it all. So well, good. And we thank you for being thank on and taking you. the time and I'll let you go and you have a good rest of your day, Renee. You too. Bye. Right. Take care.